uh, so that we would have it and have information about how we ought to live and how we ought to approach things and, and as they relate to him. I, I think it's very important, uh, especially in this day and hour, that, that we know because everything you see and hear about it seems to me like, in fact, one of the news networks was doing a promotion about how, how they're really trying to stamp out God's word in, our, in America now. It seems like it, it's just not relevant anymore. Uh, with the masses and the majority of people. And you see the reaction in North Carolina uh, for the recent law that our governor signed and, and, our, and our, our assemblies up there went through. Uh, yeah, you see the reaction. And it seemed to me like across the nation it's that way about uh, so many other things. But what we're going to have to do is a trial and a test for us to live as Christians today in a world like we're living in. And everybody has the right to live. Everybody has the right to choose. Everybody, I'm just telling you. You, uh, basically, you're free as far as you can be free, and you're free to choose and do anything. You do not have to accept Jesus Christ. Uh, but if you don't, you're going to go to hell. And that's just that's what the Bible teaches, but that's completely up to you. You can live any, choose to live any way you want to live. And, and God has a law against how we ought to live, and he tells us how we ought to live and walk together and be a church as we ought to be. And it's not man-made law, it's the law of God. And so... I just hope by grace we'll all be able to live and make it in. Uh, of course, in Jesus Christ we will, and we know that. So, uh, tonight we're going to kind of be at the end of chapter 7, which is the end of the Sermon on the Plateau, as recorded in Matthew, uh, chapters 5, 6, and 7. And so we, we're just going to continue on. We've talked about many things, and we'll begin tonight in verse 14 of Matthew chapter 7. Uh, it, or verse, well, wait, let's... Verse 12, let's start at verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do unto you, uh, do ye even so for them. And remember, this, for this is the law and the, and, the, and the prophets. And we talked about last time we used to have a little 12-inch ruler at school, and it says, do unto others, you'd have them do unto you. Y'all remember that? Sometimes my teacher would take it and bend my hand over and make, hit my hand with that ruler. And I said, well, what if it was done unto you as you've done unto me? Uh, but she didn't think that was a joke either. But... Uh, anyway, it had it on there, and of course we know that the Bible says we'll reap what they sow. But here Jesus says, whatever you would have people, to, men to do to you, you do that also to them. But in verse 13, here we go. Enter you in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Because, and then he says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. And, and he's going to go on, and we go, we'll go on in a minute, but I want you to get the straight gate thing here and the, and the broad way. Uh, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many times, and in fact, I believe in most of the Gospels, uh, this, this subject is mentioned about the straight gate, the narrow way, uh, and, and many, few there be that find it, few there be that go in there, because, of course, that's the way of the Lord, walk in the way of the Lord. I, and really, uh, you know, if men, men want to walk in the way of the world. Our flesh wants to walk in the way of the world. We want, to, life, we want life to be a party. We want it to be easy for us. And, and we want our way. And, and basically, that's it. Because, uh, you know, the, this old sin nature in man is selfish. Uh, and... Uh, it's, it's really very deceitful and very, uh, in, in fact, uh, you're, you'll do anything uh, if, you, if you follow the leading of the flesh. The flesh is set on fire of hell, uh, and, uh, and we, just, we just have to be careful. So the choice is, is up to you. God has made a way of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's up to everybody. And, you know, we don't go out there with a rope like the cowboys lassoing cattle. Uh, we don't go out there try, with a rope trying to lasso, lasso and, and drag anybody in uh, because you have the right not to come in. You have the right not to live your life for Jesus Christ. You, like I said, you can live any way. Uh, you can talk any way you want to talk, act any way you want to all act. But I just want to tell you all something. There is a time when every man shall give an account of what he's done in his body, whether good or bad. Amen. That's what the scripture says. And so, uh, you know, we, you need to know that. That's what you need to know. You need to know that there is a, there is a, a, a judgment that's going to come because it's appointed unto man to die, and then, of course, judgment follows. Uh, so choose, choose this day 
uh, whom you will serve as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Y'all remember that scripture? And so it, it is a choice. You, yes, yeah, a choice you got to live. Here's what most people do. Well, I'm going to go ahead and lay it down while I'm young. I mean, I got all this time and all these years. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I'll, then I'll straighten myself out when I'm blowed out and burned out. I'll straighten myself out and live for the Lord. Don't work that way. It don't work that way. I mean, I wish it did uh, for those who've tried it and found out that it failed. Uh, but it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at all. And many people are so confounded when they get to that place and realize it's too late. Some people argue the difference in that. Some people say that as long as you got breath, you got opportunity. No, you don't. And anybody that preaches that hasn't read the Bible and lacks understanding about what God says. My spirit will not always strive with man. What does that verse mean? Uh, there, there comes a time when you, you'll say, Lord, Lord, and he'll say, I don't know you. And so uh, those are the things that we need to do it today. Don't put off to tomorrow what we need to do right now. Uh, we Just don't put it off. Live today as if it were your last day, but plan today like it, it's the beginning. And, and so that's the thing we need to realize. We don't know what's coming tonight. Uh, you know, the Russian... Uh, aircraft has been uh, harassing our destroyers and, and been doing some crazy things the last few days. This world's crazy that we're living in. Uh, we, we have nuclear power now, and it's, I forgot how many hundred times it is greater than the atomic bomb that was dropped on Japan. And you realize what that thing done. It, it, just, it, just, it just destroyed the Japanese. And of course, they immediately wanted to sign a truce of peace. And, uh, but our nuclear power today, uh, it, it's just a, it's unbelievable. And the Bible talks about, in fact, I was reading just this week in one of the prophets about the flesh melting off of the bones. And that's a future day. About the flesh before the, before the temple, the flesh will melt, uh, melt off the bones. And, and it doesn't say why and how. Uh, but I, I think that's, that's a weapon we have which will cause uh, that kind of thing. So, straight gate. Straight gate is the way that Jesus said, I am the way. Guys, I'm going to tell you something about the straight gate. We don't walk in there and live like we are a part of this world. We live a separated life. A life that has been born again, washed in, washed in the blood and grace of Jesus Christ. We've been forgiven and cleansed. Why should we go back to another way if we're in the, if we're in the straight gate? And I've, you've heard, you hear me preach this all the time. You hear me say it all the time. If we'll just live an example, we'll win people to Jesus Christ. If they'll see just a few of us who are sincere and dedicated to Jesus Christ and, and turning away from the former things, the things that used to be a part of our life. Just, all people need to see is their seriousness in our commitment and in our lifestyle. That we've turned away because we've been born again. What fellowship have light with darkness? And, and you know, you, you can apply that in so many areas. But what fellowship is there? There's none. The man doesn't serve two masters. And, and so when you think about all that, it, it's, the, it's the way that's less desirable of the flesh. We can't do what we want to and be in the straight gate. And so therefore that is less desirable for us. That's less desirable. And we don't want anything to do with it because it hinders us from doing what we want to do. Uh, y'all, Can y'all get a hold of that? Amen. Sure you can. And, and so... Uh, you know, when we have baptism, what do I say? What doth hinder you? And what hinders us is that very thing right there. And that's the next way, the broad way. The broad way. And, and, and in that broad way, uh, I just want to tell you that's where most people are. Not just Americans, it's people all over the world. It's just, it's people everywhere. They love the broad way. And... 
Most people like a, a religion that will let them be exalted. But in, in Christianity, we become servants. And you see, Jesus humbled himself and became a servant and said, follow me. And so we have to be servants to be a member in the Christian kingdom. And if, if servants, uh, then there's a Lord over us. And who is that Lord but Jesus Christ? But I'm going to tell you something. That broad way is full of people who is their own Lord. It's full of people who, who, have, who have overthrown the God in their life and have made and gone in their own way. And it seems right to them. It seems right to them. They say That's what they say. And there is a way which seems right, but the end of that way is destruction. Then, if you'll notice the very next verse, what does he say? Beware of false prophets. Where would a false prophet lead you as it relates to the two ways? False prophet wants to get you in the broad way. <coughs> and see, there, there's some, I believe in eternal security. Y'all know what eternal security is, right? Some people phrase it like this, once saved, always saved. I don't like that, I don't like that word. But eternal security is that we have life and we have life everlasting. But we can't live here and claim to have eternal life and don't do the will of God. So, and we're going to, that comes into that when it talks about the tree, the fruit. You'll know them by the fruit. Uh, because we can't live here as Christians and not be doing the will and have fruit in our life that represents and is, is coming directly. Good tree brings good fruit. It's going to, and that good, remember what I said? I uh, believe it was Sunday. Good fruit can only come from one place. Because there's only one good. Who is that? God. God. And so if there's any goodness, in, and then in Acts, uh, you know, Dr. Luke says in Acts, let, let your light shine, or in Matthew, let your light shine, that men may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven, because the only place the good works can come from is the Father. And so that's the that's the light of the world and the salt of the earth, and et cetera. And so when you get all that stuff and you put it together, you can understand the broad way and the narrow way. So I'm not going to just labor this point any longer. You choose, choose which way you're going. And, and when you choose which way you're going, uh, you're either reading the Bible, uh, how you're supposed to walk in that way, or, or just don't enter into any of this blindly. Don't get saved because five other people did. Don't get saved because you feel emotional, because you're going through a bad time in your life and you're trying to get through it and you think that would be the proper thing to do. We've got a church full of people that's done that. What you need to do is get saved because Jesus is softly, tenderly calling today. And, and, and you won't have no issue. You won't have no issue with it. Get saved because it's God's idea. And he, we can come because he draws. Amen. So I hope y'all, anybody, anybody got any questions about that? Listen, it says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree... That bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. You know what that symbolizes. Judged and cast into hell. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. And see, this, we have studied earlier where the scripture says, Judge not that you would be judged wherewith whatever judgment you judge it, and then it'll be judged to you. And so, yet. You have to be careful with this judging in, in fruit and space. We have to be careful with that because it's very easy to leave one and get into the other. So we have to be very careful uh, what our ideas is and our, our ideas are. That's to be the plural. That. Our ideas are we've got to be very careful that we don't let ourselves judge. And, uh, you know, you say, well, I don't just don't think Christians ought to be doing that. And you're right, probably. Uh, and, 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 and when you say that and see that, 
Uh, Christian people ought to be committed first to the kingdom of heaven because the Bible says seek first the kingdom of God. Nothing else ought to be between you and that. And, and so uh, seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added unto you, see. That's, that's how Jesus teaches us to live. But you know what we do first? We take care of, care of temporary things before we take care of eternal things. Amen? That's the truth. We do it. We do it. And, we, and we're going to keep on doing it until something happens to stop us. Or we see somebody actually living it and see the progress in their life, and that's what he's talking about here. And then we're going to learn from their life and do it right, do it the right way. And uh, uh, everybody wants friends, right? Well, look here, when you get married, you don't need no friends. You, I mean, why would you need friends after you get married? Somebody tell me. All friends will do is, is, is pull at your family today, separate your family. That's what friends will do. So, uh, so what all you need, uh, you, the woman you married or the man you married, your best friend. That's all the friends you need in the friend in Jesus Christ. And number one, get away from friends that will save you money, save you hurt and heartache. And, and you know, it's better to kind of wane yourself away because if you don't, it's going to end up abruptly and somebody's going to get really hurt in their feelings or even worse. So, uh, when, I mean, when you're going to walk with the Lord, you're going to walk with the Lord, you're going to be, you're going, you've made a decision, you're going to serve him in the church, you're going to serve him in your home, you're going to serve him on your job, you ain't many people going to want to be your friend. So that, that's what we're talking about here. You shall know them by their fruit. That's where, that's where he's going here. Many people don't want to be around you when you talk about the Lord. When you're talking about the things of God and when you're living a life and you're not a party life. Uh, I mean, some people just ain't got it. Facebook is full of advertisement of the sins of the church. If you don't believe it, just go on there and look at the pictures and, and, and some of the things that people post with the profanity in them that call themselves Christians. If you ever see one from me with a profanity or anything on it, it ain't from me. I want you, in fact, I delete them to put them... Them F words and stuff in there. I delete them. And if you do that, you'll be deleted, blocked over my stuff. I just don't. I mean, how can Christians do that? How can that happen? Uh, and so uh, we just need to, we just need to realize uh, it, this thing of choosing. Choose this day. Uh, and, and the Lord God uh, delivers you and saves you. Uh, you don't need to walk there. You don't need to live there. You don't need to do that uh, because it makes your fruit look bad. And it makes, you, it makes your fruit look like you're living something you say you're not living. And it says, in Jude, Jude talks about this very thing. It says, when I wrote unto you, you know, I, 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 wanted you to, I wanted you to contend for the faith because there are certain men crept in unawares who before of old were ordained to this condemnation. They, they've come in and, and among the believers uh, so that they, can, they penetrated the front lines of the church they're attacking from the inside out. And, and, the, and the penetration is coming from seminaries in 1966. Y'all listen to this. In the 1960s, only 66% 66 of preachers going through seminary did not believe in the virgin birth. And that's in the 60s. That's two-thirds of pulpits that have been filled by graduates of the seminary in the 60s did not believe in the virgin birth, then how can we possibly believe in eternal life if we didn't believe in the divinity of Christ? How can we possibly? And so you see, we're, we're reaping the results today. The fruits today are here to prove to us the teaching. You'll know them by the fruits. And they, they have taken us down the road. And in the 70s, it was the charismatic movement, charismatic movement. And if you don't have this gift, then you're not where you need to be. And it tore the church off to pieces from one side of America to the other side. And then we've gone through the Jim Bakers and, the, and all the, the key leadership. Uh, we've gone through fallen evangelists and all this kind of stuff. And more and more doubt has been, uh, the shadow of doubt has been cast upon the church. And the church is living in a world where I can remember when preachers were number one on the list of people that you would confide in. Today, you can't even find them in the top 20%, 25. 
Uh, nobody trusts preachers anymore because they've molested little children and little boys uh, in the church, and nobody trusts them anymore. And I don't blame them. I wouldn't trust them either. And so that's where we are. That's the kind of world we're living in. And so we, don't, we really don't know who to put. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. You can know by the fruits. You can know by the fruits. Somewhere, somehow, you know. They're, they're, it's like being running for a presidential candidate. They know everything about you. I mean, they go back and they scrape up everything. They, they scrape up everything, try to find any mud that they can sling. And, and you know what? It, it's, that's all right. It all needs to come out and open. It, it all, I, I'm not ashamed because I'm going to tell you I've been saved. I, I've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. I, my God's not accusing me anymore of that. If I ever get accused, it's from the devil, from the devil's lips. Because my God has forgiven me and hid my sins in the depth of the sea, never to be remembered anymore, washed in the blood, covered by the blood. Let Satan be a liar, for that's what he is. Amen? And so here we are tonight. I'm going to preach if you ain't careful. And so we need to get a hold of this stuff, and, and we'll capsulize it here in a little bit. Okay. So what happens if a tree doesn't bring forth good fruit? Cast into fire. And that symbolizes the death. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, well, let's back up here. We need to cover that. Uh, we, we really need to hit on this thing. And he said, many will say to me, what day? In the day of judgment. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. I want to ask you all something. What did Jesus say, uh, tell the Father when you want something? What did he tell, what's his instructions if you want something? Ask in his name. I'm going to tell you something. There's something about the name of Jesus. There used to be a song that said that. Jesus, and it went on and on and on. Jesus, Jesus. There's something about that name. Kings and kingdoms may all pass away, but there's something about that name. Jesus. Michelle sings a song about when Jesus passes by. The Bible says that there's none other name given among men whereby you must be saved. Jesus said, ask my Father in my name, and he will give it to you. There must not be something about the name of Jesus. And when we, when we really uh, get down to believe that, many people use the name of Jesus. Uh, and it's the name of Jesus that, that answers the prayer that even men that don't know him pray. Healing occurs in the name of Jesus at the hands of people who don't know him. It's the name of Jesus. And so even though people can cast out devils, he said, and even though they do many other things, I'm going to say to them, I don't know who you are. That's not going to get you in. That, salvation is not that. Salvation is not how many devils you can cast out, but it's how many devils have been cast out of you. Salvation is deliverance from the old sin man that we were and, and, and given eternal life. by We've been saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves, it's a gift of God. And, and there, we have nothing to do with that. And so therefore, uh, what we have to do is come. When the Lord says come, we come and follow him. And then he makes of us what we need to be. But we, we just need to beware. And you know, people fell for that. In the 70s, we had the, the charismatic movement. And, and now in, this, in these last several years, uh, we got the, I call it the dressing down movement, uh, you know. And, and I, I can remember, listen to this. I can, rem I can remember, uh, and it's been very recently, when, when a, one of our churches in the Southern Baptist Convention didn't have a uh, church in its name, men frowned on that. I mean, it had to be, uh, now we got the upside down, the slanted. We got all kinds of things, vertical this and vertical that. And, and 
Uh, you know, we, we're going in the wrong place is what I'm trying to tell you. Please don't take that wrong. Uh, we're going in the wrong place because if anything has ever been wrong, it's wrong now. See, that's the thing. Uh, I can remember these stuffed shirts. They used, to, they used to wouldn't let you in their pulpit if you weren't dressed to the T. Now they go up there looking like they go into a volleyball game. To the beach. What, what's happened in our church? What's happened to, where's the man of God? You've got to come in and search for him anymore. Or wait till the service starts and you'll find out who the pastor is. He tries to blend and look like the rest of the world and crowd he's got with him. And folks, it, that's wrong. I don't care what you say. You say it ain't got nothing to do with salvation. Anytime you dress down what God is, you dress down salvation. So don't, don't tell me that stuff. Don't tell me that you can do anything you want to and still be saved. You can't do it. You can't do it. If you do anything less than the will of God, you're not saved. And that's, a, that's biblical. And so when you think about all this stuff and what we, well, I know what we're trying to do. I'm a, I want men to be saved. But men are not going to be saved by this watered down mess that we call the gospel that we're taking from our churches out into the community. They've got all that they want. They live in that hell every day. They don't want to go to church and live in it too. They want to see somebody with a new standard, which is Jesus Christ. And we've got to learn that. That's why it's so important. And you know you've heard me say, don't, don't misinterpret what I'm saying to you. You know, what dress you have on or what pants you have on does not make you a Christian. But when God changes you, your outlook about everything changes. Everything. Y'all hear what I, All things become new. Everything changes when you get saved. And if, if it doesn't reflect in our churches, then we didn't get saved. And, and that's, that's the whole deal. And I'll tell you what happened. We'll drag along for a little while, and then after a while we'll be turned off and gone somewhere. That's what happens to people. It becomes boring. And, but I say unto you tonight, uh, you know, that, that God is, is trying and attempting to admonish us about these things. Uh, you that are here, and he's not talking about you thinking, you know, I know somebody he could be talking about. No, you don't. He didn't send it to them. They're not here. He sent it to this crowd of which I'm a part. And so we need to hear, we need to hear these, these messages. They're little simple messages, but my God, if we preach for the rest of our life, we couldn't preach enough to cover all that's being said here. Because it, it's so important. It's so important that we, here's what I always get. Well, what about John Baptist? John Baptist didn't never go to church. Come on, you ready for this argument? He went in the wilderness and preached the gospel. He went in the wilderness and preached the gospel. He was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you right now. He ate locust and honey. He had on a loin cloth. Yeah, he did. Out there preaching the gospel out there in the wilderness. And these uptown people left the First Baptist Synagogue and went out there and heard. He said, who told you I was out here? You remember that? He said, I knew if you come out here, you'd get saved. They did. But many of them got saved out there, in the, in the, or they said they did. You say, well, preacher, there you go again. No, I said they said they did. How many made it to the upper room in Jerusalem? What happened to the thousands that got saved in the wilderness? Hey, let's have another go tell Columbus and get a thousand saved. Where did I show up at? I bet you half of them are not in church tonight. That's what I'm telling you. We run out in the wilderness to see the guy with the loincloth or, or to see the stripped down preacher at the, at the, at the county meeting, but we, and we, we are, that's all we care about. We're showing them a different way and a different faith, and that's what we care about. I'm telling you something. It's all garbage. That's where we've lost. What happened to the leather lung preacher preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? What happened to that kind of stuff? What happened to staying and laboring there to the Holy Ghost fell down and shook the place? When he falls down and shakes you, you won't want to get back out again. That's what, that's what I'm trying to do. I knew I was going to preach. I felt it when I come. Can't help it. You, if you, a man that's called to preach, you can't stop him from preaching. Amen? Y'all might as well agree with me. So that's the way it is. It says, 
It says, many will say in that day, Lord, I prophesy in your name. I cast out devils in your name. And in thy name done many wonderful work. I don't run around casting out devils. So if you've got one, don't ask me. I just don't do it. Uh, and the reason I don't do it is because that's, I, I don't feel called to do that. Them devils will tear your clothes off. I saw that in, in the Bible. If you, I'm telling you, they said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Rappo, and they pulled that thing off. They left the, the seven sons of Sceva out there butt naked running down the street, embarrassed to death, trying to cast out the devil. I ain't messing with the devil. I'm going to call him the Lord. The Lord rebuke him. Amen? I ain't messing with something I don't know about. And, I, and that's just me, and that's the way I feel about it. Oh, yeah, he gave us power over demons. He sure did. Uh, but I'm telling you, I'm going to stick with the healing because I know I got some of them gifts. I'm going to stick with the preaching because I know I've been called. These other stuff, I know other people have the gifts and other people can do these things. I don't, ain't going to mess with the devil. I have enough trouble without it. Amen. So, in my name, they've done many wonderful works. All this, all this stuff seems very good. And I, I'm just going to read it. I've told some of y'all this. Some of y'all weren't here when I told it. But I, I just want to share with you ministries that are still going on. Uh, this week I saw a list of uh, the 10 most wealthy preachers in the world. I think number, number one in the world is worth $155 million. Most of them are from foreign countries. Billy Graham was one of them. Uh, but they, they, I think the least they're worth was like $13 million or something like that. And uh, I thought I saw it in my left. When, when did you make this list? Benny Hinn was one of them. Um, I don't know who it. They they named sir. Uh, they named ten. But and they they were worth millions of dollars. Well, what's what's wrong with that? Well, uh, I mean uh, T D Jakes. Uh, uh, they they pastor thousands of people. They money's coming in. I don't know why they're worth that much. I I I mean I I just don't know. I just don't. I don't understand why uh, evangelists uh, need uh, gold toilet seats. I just don't see that. But I do know what I started to tell you was the Happy Goodmans, many of you older people remember the Happy Goodmans, they're dead now. They're all dead. There's some of their sons and daughters might be living, and they're old. But they used to be the gospel, it would be the Happy Goodmans, and they had an hour. I think it was probably on black and white television, and they just could sing. They they just flat. Vestal Goodman, one of the, probably the best sopranos that's ever sung, uh, but she could flat sing. Wouldn't take nothing from a journey now is one that we probably heard and knew about. Wouldn't, you know, just uh, Randy's sister sing, uh, Mary, not Mary, but um, Libby Perry sings that song. Kind of sounds like Vestal Goodman. But anyhow, we, we lived in Virginia, in Norfolk, and, and over at the uh, Pat Robinson network over there, what, what was it, PTL he had or? I believe it was PTL Network. We'd go over there and they'd do their recording over there for this hour program that they had on television. And, and we, we were over there and, and this night and this two sisters and a brother were going to be their special guests that week. And so uh, they got up and got singing. Well, the brother got happy. He just started shouting, praising the Lord, cut! This went on several times. Boy couldn't sing the song without getting the Holy Ghost on him and start shouting. And they cut, and they done that until that boy quit his shouting. And then they recorded that, and that was, we put that on the program. And then we went back another time, and, we went, and they were having that 700 Club thing that come on. And of course, Pat Robinson and his guests would be there, and and somebody, somebody would have a vision and they'd see somebody doing something or that somebody had their leg, the Holy Ghost was doing something in somebody's life. And on this particular occasion, they, uh, somebody's legs are being healed and, and they saw them being healed and, and there's somebody right back over there is being healed and this guy over here says five seconds uh, to break. Just as soon as that thing broke, that man quit being healed and everybody quit hallelujah and were in the spirit. Everybody jumped up and went to the bathroom wherever they went to. It came back in about five, ten seconds there. They said five seconds to air time, and that man started ruffling again. His leg was getting healed again. 
I'm going to tell you something. That's exactly what most of this mess is about on television. You get what they want you to see. It's, most of it is a lie from hell. But I'll tell you right now, it brings in mega millions to these ministries. Just look at the TBN studios all over the world inlaid with gold from old purple hair and her man. I'm going to tell you all something. They, Jesus is going to say, depart from me. Now, they, I'm sorry I might have insulted you. They, you made me some of your favorite programs. But let me tell you now, if, when you start to die, if you think Benny Hinn can keep you from dying, you go hug the television. And he'll pray for you, send him a check while you're hugging it. You ain't going to get raised from the dead by no Benny Hinn. I, I don't care if his daddy and his mama were Jews and he's a Jew. I don't care. His name ain't Jesus. It's him. Amen. Uh, but, but people have come to all that mess. And, 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 when you, and it's absolutely mess. And my wife don't like me to talk about this stuff. But I just want to share. We're in a scripture here that says you shall know them by their fruit. We're in a scripture here. When you find this stuff out, my taste for the happy good ones went away from me. Oh, I like to watch Precious Memories when, when oh, what's his name, leads them and they sing them beautiful hum, songs. But I remember sitting in that studio when nobody could shout. That's what's wrong with people. You know why people don't come to church? They've been to church. You take that thought home and you think about it for about a week. And let that just digest. They've been to church. They, they heard the shuffling in the back back there, but they saw it quit when the preacher said amen. That's what's wrong. That's, that's what's wrong in our society. We are the West whatever Baptist church that stands across the road there and, and with signs that said that, that dead child, uh, family member deserved it. Westbrook or whatever that thing's called. You know, the world's sick of us. And they're sick of our playing games up here at the church. They're sick. They're sick, they're sick, they're sick. Anyway, let's move on. Amen? So you'll see that if you'll, if you'll be around long enough. But I want to tell you everybody in the church ain't like that. I want to tell you there is a remnant. That's what the scripture teaches. It's a big remnant. There's people that ain't, that ain't gone back on what they said. And then and when you, you put all this together... It says, many will say in that day, and, and he said, and then I will profess that I never know them, depart from me. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sins of mine and doeth them, will I liken unto a wise man. This is how Jesus ends up his time, his message with his people there as he taught them the sermon on the plateau. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. You know, you remember when Peter was telling Jesus upon this rock, will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it? And when he spoke, you know, Peter means a rock. You know that, right? Petros means a rock. Peter was a little rock. If you take it back into the original language, he was a little rock. But when Jesus said on this rock, it's the big rock. And that's the rock of faith. And you know, Jesus himself said, if you got faith the size of a mustard seed, and I got some the other day and planted them, and, and I could barely see them. You can barely see a mustard seed, and, ho and when you hold them in your hand, when you look back, when they start coming up, they'll be everywhere because they flowed through your hand. They were so small, you couldn't control them. Uh, but that mustard seed, now you think about a big mustard seed, a big rock. That's what Jesus is saying. You're a wise man if you, if you believe what I've been telling you. And look here, what does he cover from chapter 5? He's covered every avenue of our life. He's covered the way to heaven, the way to grace. He's covered how we ought to live. He's covered divorce. He's covered adultery. He's covered murder. He's covered everything. He's covered how we ought to live in, as Christian people and how we ought to walk and, and not be fake about it and, try, and not be hypocrites about it. And then he says, if you've heard my sayings and you believe them, you're a wise man who built his house on the big rock. In Texas this, this week, they had hail the size of tennis balls. They showed it. It was piling up. Y'all know how big a tennis ball is? I mean, you stop and think about, if you'd have been out in that, it would have beat your brains out. 
I'm telling you right, he'd beat cars up. Insurance companies are uh, beside themselves. They, think they got to pay for all those dings of all those cars out there. And I just want you to understand something. And that's just a small thing. Tornadoes can clear out a mile for 100 miles. I mean, look at what's going on. God said, I will shake it again. I'm going to shake heaven and I'm going to shake earth again. Volcanoes are erupting from the bottom of the ocean. They're erupting all over. They're erupting in America and all over the world. Just There shall be earthquakes in many places, diverse places. I'm telling you, pestilence after pestilence come. I, they, I report today from that... A great authority on, on medical things. This, this disease, that mosquito carrier disease is worse than they thought it was and man, it's breaking out into an epidemic. I'm telling you something. The flu is late. People are almost dying. The little boy, Colby Holmes, that we've been praying for, that's what he had. He had the flu. Broke out into life support. Broke out into to family dread. They didn't know if he's going to make it or not. It's, it's, this earth is full. So where have you built your house? Where have you built your house? I will liken him, a wise man. And he says, rain came. The hail sized tennis balls came. Floods came. Winds blew. Beat upon that house. And it fell not because it was upon the big rock. But there's another rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. You see, there's that broad way and that narrow gate. There it is again. It's showing up again. Foolish men deny there is no God. Foolish men say, I don't want this Christ. And that's the condemnation in John chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. The condemnation is that he's come, and men deny him. See, that's it. I mean... If you're full of something, it's going to overflow, isn't it? I want to tell you all the other night, I had some coffee and I had some milk and I had some water. And those three things don't, don't mix up. Somehow or another. And I laid down and I thought I was drowning for about an hour there. I would, that mess would come up and I'd, <coughs> I'd wake up and couldn't hardly breathe. And Judy, she didn't even know about it. I spent an hour or two there trying to fight for breath. So finally, I got up out of the bed and sat down in the den there until all this stuff passed. I, I just, guys, I just, want you, I just want you to know something. In life, we, life is so uncertain. I read today where there's been a couple over near Lord, some they, one, the My husband shot the wife and then himself. They didn't put the names in there, but I don't know who that was. But they're in the 30s. Uh, we've had more overdoses on this, on this new heroin that's out that's been cut with, with I forgot what to call this, uh, synthetic stuff. And it's killing people. And, and we just got all kind of mess happening. Flu's killing people. We got mosquitoes that's causing babies' heads to be little. I mean, what in the world? Who's ever heard of such stuff as that? Just, just think about all this stuff. And, and it, you know, the only place that nothing ain't changed, the animal kingdom hasn't changed. It's the human kingdom that's changed. The human kingdom started acting like animals, out of control. And so we got a mess. I've never seen such a tear-down mess as we got. I'm so mad at everybody running. I, I don't even want to vote now. Amen. I'm mad. I know I got to. I guess I hold my nose when it comes time. Amen. But I'm just telling you something. Never seen such a reaction as we're having over right things in life. Over what's right. Now, I just want you to tell me. We, we started in chapter 5. Tell me some things you've learned from chapter 5 through chapter 7. Somebody tell me something you've learned. Come on, we ain't got much time. Well, let me help you out. We started out with the Beatitudes, didn't we? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed, blessed, blessed. 
That's called the beatitude. Then the similitudes, we're the salt of the earth. If the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Then you are the light of the world, city set on a hill which cannot be hidden. Neither the men light a candle and put it under a candlestick, but on a bushel and it giveth light to all that are in the place. I mean, that's where we began. And, and, and you know, really, uh, that was a heart. The condition of our heart brings about these things we begin with. And it only comes about because we've been born again. You see, you, I saw a projection one time of, of how when men discovered fire. And I, I think that's the biggest ruse in the world. <laughs> Our God is a consuming fire, and they say men discovered fire. <laughs> I mean, but this, in this little documentary type thing, everybody chased this guy that had the fire. They discovered it somewhere, and he was running with it to get it somewhere else, and they were chasing after him trying to get fire. Crazy mess. I, I'll tell you what's the truth. Foolish people believe in, in this Darwin's mess. Evolution. I mean, 5,000 years ago, the Lord said that a, a razor shall not be upon his head. That's a Nazarite. That's 5,000 years ago. I mean, come on, guys. If you've got to think that somewhere or another you jumped off a tree limb and became something other than a monkey, are you serious? You, and therefore, when you get ready to die, you're going to go to heaven and they're going to set a big old fat ape up there because we're creating his image and likeness. Are you serious? There's some that believe that bull. So, okay, so what have you learned? That's how we started off here. What have you learned? Come on. Not to judge others. That's exactly right. Why, why do you reckon the Lord wouldn't want us to do that? He's the only one that can do it justly. That's exactly right. Don't judge it somewhat. What else did we learn? That's right, A-S-K, ask, seek, and knock. That's exactly right. You have not because you ask amiss. I mean, just ask, and it shall be given. Knock, seek, and you shall find, and knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Something. What else have we learned? That do what? Okay. See, and then we decided it's, it's, this is all choices. We choose. That's right. That's exactly right. And see, why is that all important? What's the last, last verses of the chapter say? For you who hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, you should be like the man who built his house upon the rock, the big rock. But whosoever heareth them not and doeth them not will be like the man who built his house on sand. I mean, that's why we need to do, you know all this stuff. You, you, you got to remember this stuff. You're a Christian. You, you say you're a child of God. You, you choose based on God's will, not your will. I, I want you to know something. Mr. Hardy, I won't ever forget, before he, he told this more than one time, of how he, on one Sunday morning he came by the road out there in front of our church and the Spirit spoke to him. He said, and that Spirit said, turn in there. He said, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to go on. He went on down the road. He said he went down to Clarendon Church. He didn't know it was Clarendon at that time, but he said he went down there and got, went into the parking lot and the Lord said, no, this is not the place for you to go. 
And he turned around and he said, when he got back, right back out here, the Lord told him again, turn in that parking lot right there. And y'all know the rest of the story. He turned in here and until he died, he was as faithful here as he could be. And his wife now wasn't to her help, now hinders her from coming. I'm telling you something. That, that's a strong testimony of following the will of God. Drove from down there where Millie lives. She lives on the shortcut road in McNabb, and he lived over there on, on uh, uh, Dow Road. That, that was his, his grandson's name was Dow, and B.D. meant Benjamin Dow Hardy. And so he lived over there, and it's down near where Millipede lives, a few miles there. But two of the oldest people in the church drove almost the longest distance to get to church. You know why? Because the will of the Lord was for them to drive it. And, and that's what we need to learn, and that's what we need to know. It, all, it might not always be the church that Grandpa raised you up in. Maybe the very one that long ways down the road where God can use you. It may not always be the thing that you want to do. But you, if God's leading you, you have to do it. Uh, you, just, you just got to do it. God will not put anything in your life that hinders your participation in his kingdom work. God will not send things your way that will cause you to stumble. God will not lie to you. He will not, anything that's in darkness is not of God. Because anywhere God is, is light. And so that's what it, this stuff's been all about. God meant it when he said don't lust after a woman to sin with her. God meant it when he said don't, don't check out the cheeky butt of some guy that walked by you down the street. God meant it when he said, you know, what, what would cause somebody to tempt you? Did you know that they went through a period in the church where they had church prostitutes? Did you know that the sons of Ahab, which were ministers under his leadership as the high priest, had sex with the women in the church, and he said nothing about it. And both of them were killed, and he fell off the bench he was sitting on, and he was a heavy man and broke his neck when he heard that they had, he let his sons die in their sin. I want to tell you all, this church of the day is not the first church that was full of sin. And I want to tell you it won't be the last one except the Lord comes shortly because the church has always been the stir up in the heart of God. The scripture is written for the church. Don't you think that when you read that, it's not written for the unlost, for the lost man and the, and the ungodly man out there. He can't comprehend it. It's written for the church, for the people of God. It's written for us, and we better quit turning our head away from it and say, oh, that ain't for me. It is for you. It is for you. And so uh, it, this is the measure. That's why Christ said, you're going to say this stuff to me, and I'm going I'm to scratch my head and say to you, I don't know you. You didn't, you, that, you didn't do that under my leadership. You did that under your leadership. My name was just invoked. But I don't know you. And when you really stop and think about it, that's really tough. But this is not, this is not a game of marbles that you pick up your marbles and when you get a little perturbed and run to another church. Or stay home for a while. This ain't your little ball game that you play in here. You, God chose you. And I'm going to tell you right now, you better start taking it serious. Because we about done. We about over. And I believe that with all my heart. I believe that the next loud sound we hear could be the trumpet. I really honestly in my heart expect it any minute. Because how much longer, Lord, will this stuff prevail? that we're having to live in the midst of. Now, if you don't believe history teaches this, you go back to Sodom and Gomorrah. You know what the chief sin among the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about them were. It, there were more cities round about them that were destroyed for that same sin. I, I want to tell you today that there were cities that were destroyed, Tyre and Sidon, and other cities that were destroyed because of their sacrifice of children. And I'm telling you, when these abortion clinics put a suction hose in a woman's womb and suck a baby out, they might as well have a gun in their hand. 
I want you to know they'll spend eternity in hell. They can go to every church they want to go to. You can't do that if you're Christian. They say it's child sacrifice. And now on the other end of that scale, they're starting to take these senior adults out of here quick because you become a problem. Orwell says they make crackers out of their bodies. Of course, we hadn't come to that depravity yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if they started a protein cracker. Are you serious? If God destroyed them then, why won't God destroy it now? If God never changes, what's the deal here? I can look it up and give it to you. It's one little word, long-suffering. He's long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. All right, it's open to y'all. Anything in these chapters that you want to talk about for a couple minutes before we pray? Any questions you might have? 